What's up guys, welcome to today's video which will be based on the new Arctic P12 Max fans which come in 120 mm of size and these are something, uh, uh, let's say, advanced compared to the standard fans that you have on your AIOs and this is where you could upgrade them and in terms of getting some, let's say, very close cooling with 240, upgraded to 40 to the 360 stock. So this is going to be a quite interesting test and benchmark because I'm going to run both of these, so 240 and 360 stock, and going to run both of this again with Arctic P12 Max fans. And uh, the tests will be done on AMD Ryzen 79, 9 7900X in Ada64 Extreme Edition and Cinebench R23. All tests are going to run for 10 minutes in an ambient temperature of 23 Celsius degrees and well, what else we have, yeah, the speed of the fans on each configuration, so stock and P12 Max is going to be on 65%, so that, let's say that percentage is a percentage where you actually have a nice cooling performance but still uh, not that loud and this is the thing of course we're going to check the specifications of p12 max and the fans on each of these so you can have a total comparison of the, the airflow of the fan speeds uh, max and minimum and of course the decibel range so you could actually compare the stats with the specifications and get the actual picture of everything. So let's start with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 RGB. RGB doesn't matter, honestly, but uh, let's check out the specifications of each fan, starting with the Liquid Freezer 2 240. So the fans go from 200 to 1800 RPMs, controlled by PWM. The airflow is 48.8 CFM and static pressure is 1.82 millimeters. Per H2O. The dimensions are 120, 120, 25. The dimensions on all of these is basically the same. Now let's go with the Liquid Freezer to 360. The fan speed is from 200 to 1800 RPMs, controlled by PWM of course. Airflow is 56.3 CFM and static pressure is 2.2 mm per H2O. And then when we go to the P12 Max, we have 200 to 3300 rpms the airflow is 137.69 cubic meter per hour or 81.04 cfm static pressure is 4.35 millimeter h2o the noise level is 0.6 sounds uh, we have dual ball bearing cable length is 40 centimeters and of course 4 pin pwm so basically already on the specifications you can see that the P12 Max actually have much better specs in terms of fan speeds. Well, the fan speeds go along with decibel level. So if you go to a higher RPM, the decibel level will follow. And I actually encountered that right here when I didn't set the fan curve to 65%, right? So basically when you plug them in, for some strange reason on my Astro boards, they immediately went 100% at 3300 RPMs. But regardless to that, I didn't want to test a loud environment. I wanted to test out to give you guys an ideal and perfect, uh, let's say, environment with normal room temperature. It was one degrees above standard 22. And I wanted to give you a quiet environment in terms of you can game and you can actually do something work and still have nice temperatures with the fans not creating extra noise. And of course, airflow and static pressure are really, really above the fans on the Liquid Freezer 2, 240 and 360. So the results are quite interesting. I actually used two different bench tables and they're not actual bench tables. I placed the boards on uh, their boxes. One bench table had AMD Ryzen 9 7900X and the other one had AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. Why I did this? Because, well, basically the new generation of AMD processors don't have too much varieties in thermals, but they have varieties in clock speeds. So, AIDA64 Extreme Edition with 7900X going at full throttle, right? Liquid Freezer 2 240 in stock went up to 88 degrees Celsius, but the clock speed was 5150 
megahertz. The Liquid Freezer 2 to 40 with P12 Max went up to 86, so it did lower the temperature by 2 degrees. But the clock speed went up, up to 5200 megahertz, which is quite interesting. Now, with the Cinebench R23 in 10 minutes benchmark, as already stated how, how I did the benchmarks, Liquid Freezer 2 240 stock went up to 92 with the clock speed 5175 MHz. And then I placed the P12 Max on it. We got 88, so 4 degrees, that's quite a lot of difference. And I think this is the biggest difference in all the benchmark when it comes to thermals. So 4 degrees difference with clock speed 5225 MHz. You see what I'm getting at. Now, I think you already know these things if you watched other guys doing reviews on the AMD processor and stuff like that. But this is what I'm getting at. This is where I actually present to you P12 Max. Next to that, Liquid Freezer 2 360 in stock version 10 minutes, 87 degrees in AIDA 64, with clock speed going even higher, 5350 megahertz. Now, when I placed the P12 Max on the 360, we got 84, so this is actually 3 degrees difference, but the clock speed also went up, 5375 megahertz. And in Cinebench R23, we got stock version of 360 going at 90 degrees Celsius with 5300 megahertz, and then with P12 Max, 87 degrees with 5375 megahertz. So you see the difference. You see what I'm getting at. You can see the pattern, what is happening. The AMD is pushing to some sort of a temperature limit, but still pushing the clock higher. So this is really good because you get, let's say, more speeds at the same temperatures. Let's put it that way. And in other benchmark, we have 5600G, right? Aida 64, Liquid Freezer 2, 240 stock, 64 degrees with 4175 MHz. Added P12 Max to the Liquid Freezer 2, we got 62 degrees, which is 2 degrees lower, but 4225 MHz. So the clock speed eventually went up here as well. See the bench R23, 10 minutes, 67 degrees with 4200 MHz of clock speed, and with P12 Max on 240, we got 65 degrees Celsius with 4250 MHz. Now, if you go with the 361 with stock version, 63 degrees in AIDA 64 with clock speed going 4275 MHz, and then we switch to the P12 Max on 360, 62 degrees with 4300 MHz. Switching to Cinebench R23, 66 degrees, 4250 on the 360 stock, and 360p12 max, 64, going with 4275 MHz. So what we get here and what I'm talking about, this isn't basically an AMD benchmark, right? Let's put it this way. How can you boost your performance on AMD CPUs with P12 max, right? If you already have a Liquid Freezer 240 or 360, the P12 max won't drastically lower the thermals, well, at least on AMD, but it will definitely give you a higher clock speed, which definitely gives you a better performance. Unfortunately, just now I realized I should have actually written down the score in Cinebench so you could actually see the difference with higher clock speeds, achieving better uh, scores in Cinebench R23. But okay, regardless of that, that's my mistake. But you can see the pattern going throughout the whole benchmark and throughout the whole graphs that I made for you guys. So you can check out the difference that the P12 Max does actually perform much better, giving us a bit higher decibel noise level, which isn't unbearable. I won't say it's drastical, it's just a bit higher than these ones, and most likely you won't notice it that much or even at all, which is really good because the performance on these ones is outstanding. Unfortunately, as I already stated a couple of times, I can't record uh, any decibel levels because I have a huge studio right here where I have loads of echo and the only thing saving it is the microphone and later on editing inside the software. So basically doing decibel noise level, I already get 30 decibels when just turning on the device. So yeah, there's that. But uh, all in all, what I would say, if if, if you don't have an RGB version and you still want to keep the RGB version, but you have a, something like this, the Liquid Freezer 
to 240, 360, 280, which is an RGB, and you still want a better performance, even though this performance is quite outstanding, you can always go with P12 Max, place it on these coolers, on these AIOs, and achieve either better thermals or achieve higher clock speeds, depending what processor you're using, of course. But regardless to that, it, this is really cool to upgrade your liquid freezer to, or just basically placing them inside your case because they still look good even though they don't have rgb you don't have to go with rgb spectrum you can go always go with uh, static color so don't get me wrong guys but yeah all in all the performance is outstanding and it really does perform inside the box you get one fan of course and four standard case screws and that's all there is to it yeah i have to say big thumbs up to arctic they constantly do something new to actually give us uh, better cooling, lower or even the same decibel level, but still we get more performance out of the products we already have, so this is just an advantage. I'll place the links below, but you can always find them on their website, but just in case, the link for the Arctic P12 Max is below, and uh, why not give it an... PC crazy performance badge without a doubt because it did perform quite nicely and there were no issues with it simply plug and play you just have to remove these fans and yeah cable going throughout the tube the splitter basically you could always use it to connect the P12 Max but honestly since the RPMs are higher here I would go and connect these fans to a separated PWM header on your motherboard so you can individually control the fans and the pump which is in my occasion and what I did actually a much better solution than plugging everything all together at once and that's it so guys thank you for watching this uh, well it was another extensive review because it really did took quite uh, some time swapping the motherboard swapping swapping the AAO, swapping the fans and everything. And uh, hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you really like this kind of reviews, including that benchmarks for the games I did a couple of days ago, hope you subscribe and stay because I have loads of more content such as this coming quite shortly and uh, really means a lot if you do stay and if you do support the channel. So thank you very much. Uh, hope to see you guys next time and bye-bye.